Hello, um, my name is Chi Hao. I'm a recent graduate from School of Visual Art in New York City. And this year, class of 2020, and I was majoring in graphic design, interaction design. And during my school years, I have been uh, an intern, graphic design intern at Shumayak, Guy Smart, and Javi, and also a product design intern at Nokia. I'm now working at MRI McCann as associate designer. And my goal is to become a brand identity designer. So the first work that I want to share with you is a school project that I've done in my senior year. So it's a rebrand project for Brooklyn Botanical Garden. So when I first started this project, I actually went to uh, Brooklyn Botanical Garden and I just realized that it's just um, such a beautiful place with these fountain collections of plants, flowers, blossoms. And after I went there, I was thinking, so it is a beautiful place, but what makes Brooklyn Botanic Garden different? So I started to look into their history and I found these um, historical photos from their website. So this is one of the garden and, and Brooklyn Botanical Garden is called Shakespeare's Garden. So this is a photo that was taken in 1926. And then last year I took this photo. So it's been almost a hundred years. So it was so interesting that almost all the layout is the same, but you can see that the plants and the trees has been growing bigger. And same thing for their Japanese garden. So this is a photo from 1916. And this is a photo, um, this is a photo from last year. So it's really nice to see that the house is still there, but everything just got bigger, taller and different. And then I was thinking, so how can we relate that to our experience? So I noticed that the location of Brooklyn Botanic Garden was just New York City. So I was looking into the uh, historical photos of New York City. So this is um, Times Square from 1950. And this is Times Square right now. And also this is the map from 1873. And it was just like illustrative map. And this is Manhattan right now. So one thing that I thought was the most interesting thing was that everything is staying in the same place, but they grow higher and bigger. So I came up with this idea that Brooklyn Botanic Garden is a place that grows with New York City and they grow together, but differently. I think these two photos really explain um, my concept of, of how these two places are growing together, but in a totally different ways. And then I developed these graphical elements. So they both represent, one represent the city and one represent um, the Brooklyn Botanical Garden, which are the plants inside the garden. So it can be a line that can change into a stem and a circle into a flower and even a diamond into a leaf. Or also a short line into an aloe. And then combining the idea and uh, the graphical elements, I created this poster showing the botan botanical garden is growing within the city, but in a different way. And I also created this subway app that conveys the idea of how uh, Brooklyn Botanical Garden is growing within the city, but in a different way. I also came up with this tagline that says, New York City grows fast, we grow differently. Yeah, so the poster design, um, it's showing that only one thing is different, which is the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. So uh, in addition to the subway, I also made this like billboard to show how it can work in the bigger scale. Yeah, and and the system is also really flexible. It can be applied to stationary, like business cards or some tote bags. 
and they are all using the same idea and same system and su super simple, it's easy to use. And it's also necessary for um, the botanical garden to use photography to promote their seasonal events. So uh, they can just simply change the graphical element into flowers. So even though it's not using the same kind of element, but it still has the same identity so people can recognize it from the same brand. And the second project that I want to share with you is an, an identity project that I designed for the museum called Bacteria Museum. So in the beginning, I was looking into the form of bacteria. So this is how they look like. So it's like uh, the same shape that's being repeated and that they are connected with a single point. And besides looking into the shape of it, I was also thinking how do bacteria behave? So I was mainly focusing on how they communicate since museum is the place that educate people um, what bacteria are. So let's say this is a bacteria and how they communicate is that they will produce the, this kind of hormone molecule and then they release it into the water. And when, whenever there is another same kind of bacterium, they have this, this thing called receptor, which can receive the same kind of molecule that uh, their own species produce. But when, whenever there is a different kind of bacterium, they might have different kinds of receptors. So what they do is that they speak a universal language that all the bacteria can understand. And I think the shape of this thing is really interesting. And it, it reminds me of, of intra typefaces. So intra typefaces are um, the typeface that has those little indent in the narrow corner of the letters. So what it does is it allows uh, the extra ink to get inside and fill up those, uh, those spaces. So make it more legible with, when it's in smaller sizes. So the idea of that, I, I feel is really related to uh, the communication of bacteria. So those molecules can get into those small receptor, which is which are like in getting inside the ink traps. And then I, uh, based on that idea, I developed this typeface that's based on the shape of bacteria and the idea of how they communicate. So each of them uh, are the similar form that's connected with a single point. And whenever there comes to a narrow corner, it has a small ink trap over there that represent the receptor of bacteria. And within the same form, uh, I use the same, the same kind of shape to develop the icon system, which is necessary for uh, when we are doing the design for a museum. And this is how a stationary look like. So, the, the form of the typeface not only be used on the type and the icons, it can be used as patterns. And the poster itself can only just, we can just use only the type. And this is just uh, an entrance of one of the galleries to showcase how the, the system can be in bigger size and smaller sizes. So in addition to the type and icon, it can be applied on infographics, patterns, and it's also really flexible that you can place copy inside those shapes. This is how one of the uh, museum gallery can look like. And the same system can be applied on the signage, like they can put the, um, uh, the text in it. And since uh, the idea of that typeface was inspired by the communication, that shape of it also looks like speech bubble. So when you put type in it, it looks like someone speaking something. And on tote bag, I try to use some of the colors um, to try to play with the pattern of it. 
see how we're going to need to have you wrap it up. Oh, and turn right. it yeah, over this to is Alan the last if you've got one more. Yeah, and the poster away photography and typography. And thank you so much. And if you're interested in more of my work, feel free to go to my website, which is the URL under my name. And if you want to ask me some question, feel free to email me. And thank you. Thanks so much again, Chi Hao, for that presentation. I'll turn it over straight to Ellen now. Wow, Chi Hao, that's amazing. You're getting lots of loves in the, in the chat, too. <laughs> so take a look at that. People are so impressed with your thought process with your love of science and research and how that really then results in beautiful form as well. Uh, so the Thank research you. really successfully makes it into your design work, which is spectacular. Um, I, um, I love the storytelling style of your presentation, which is really different from Parker's, right? So Parker sort of opened up kind of letting us see more of the work uh, which is one great method. And you instead created suspense and um, carried us through the seeds of the work and held back at actually showing the results, right? Um, and it's a very different style. So, so people who are following along today, I think it's really useful to look at different ways that designers present their work, right? Um, so part of your storytelling technique that I really love is asking a question, right? So you ask, you know, how, how do bacteria communicate or what makes the New York Botanic Garden different? Um, and those questions make your audience curious. We want to know what the answer is. Um, and then you do a beautiful job. Um, taking us through that. I think the Bacteria Museum is especially um, innovative and um, incredible form that you end up developing based on that research that you did. Um, so that's really cool. Um, if I were someone hiring you, I would be very excited about how curious you are, how methodical you are, of course, your technical skills are, are really strong and, and that's important. Um, if I were a client, I would be really excited because you are demonstrating a rationale behind the work. And I think clients really want to know that. I know myself as a museum curator, when I work with exhibition designers and um, graphic designers for exhibitions. I really want to know why they arrived at a particular choice. Um, and so your research and your method of telling the story behind the work um, is really good. It really makes people feel like they trust you and they trust your process. Um, and they get an understanding that design isn't just making something look good, right? It, it, there's a whole um, area of research behind it. Um, you know, I would say about the bacteria museum, you know, the way you develop a whole typeface from that study of the concept of bacteria talking to each other <laughs> is really cool. And I think one of the reasons your ultimate design is so strong is that you're using the typeface both in outline form and in a solid. Um, so you've essentially created, you know, a visual design tool. Yeah, let people see it while we talk. It's nice. You okay. can kind of cursor, cursor through the stuff. Um, you really created this tool in this font that then allows you to create a myriad of uh, applications. Um, so this is like, this is a stellar piece, right? I think the Botanic Garden piece is really strong too. Um, there are parts of it that feel kind of cold, right, for a garden. It's maybe like too Swiss and too technical. So I think you got people really excited when you added the photographs of real flowers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that was like, that's like really where the whole thing comes to life. And I could see an animation where like one of those circles blooms and opens up and becomes a flower. You know, there you really allowed nature to, to enter into it. Um, so I think you have a really terrific thought process for this piece, too. 
but you could probably emphasize that element of nature, right? Um, right. And I think you do that really great at the end. And then I, I loved in your presentation, um, your use of before and after, you know, the historic photos and the contemporary photos. So I kind of like to see what's the before and after of the botanic garden identity. You know, how did, what did they actually use and, and what are you proposing? It could be nice to see how you're um, updating their, their look. Yeah, uh, but that's, that's a nice a technique idea. that's that transformation before after so really you should be super proud of this work and i'm sure everybody on the call is really learning a lot from you people are are loving it do you have any questions for me anything you'd like to have feedback yeah. in specific yeah i like to know like a um, professional designer like you how, how do you get design inspiration from well, I think um, most of us get inspiration just from looking at other designers work on the internet, you know, <laughs> and I think what you're doing is so much more interesting that you're doing like real research about your client and real research about science instead of only looking at other graphic design. So I think all of us should should learn from you and uh, try to dig deeper when we're looking for inspiration. Yeah. Thank you. And you got a, a wonderful sense of typography. That's really nice. Thank and the, the, um, the way you presented the portfolio is great too. I felt like I could always really see the work and um, you know, those pages where you're showing the merchandise and the applications is not too cluttered. You know, I, I really felt like I could um, grasp it very well. Fantastic. Thank you, Alan. How was your experience at SVA? Do you feel like you learned a lot? Yeah, I learned a lot over there. And yeah, I was also inspired by many of my classmates and especially for, um, how we get into the concept of an um, identity. Yeah, we really spend a lot of time thinking about concept. So I think for me, instead of like, um, like just making things beautiful, uh, I prefer to look into like what the brain truly is, mm -hmm. like what's the meaning behind the brain. Sometimes um, I feel like the clients might not even know what they, they are sometimes. And I think my job, what I want to do is to help them to find um, their own identity. Yeah, well, I think that's what clients really need. And that's what you can't get from a logo generator. You know, you can't get in, insight into um, who you are. And so I think your whole presentation is a manifesto for why design is worth spending money on. You know <laughs> that it has depth and it's it research and um, original thought. So congratulations. Thank you so really much. Terrific.